I couldn't be more excited. Like, look at this thing. Looks really good. Ah, there it is. Hmm. Is this on? Well, let's go. I've driven the car like four times. Of the four times I've driven the car, three things have gone wrong. Last minute changed my fuel pressure regulator because my other one was leaking. And I also have bigger Mishimoto fans that I would like to try and fit in here. This is one of the problems, I just, it's cluttered, I don't like it. I don't want it down there because it's next to the steering. But then I found out this is my flex fuel. I pinned that in and I forgot to plug it in. So that's one another thing I can tackle today. I'm gonna take a pause for the car for the moment and then start to reorganize the garage so I can get myself a better workspace. Uh, other than that, I do have another project. Here is the other part of the plan, the FJ. Just a little sneak peek, right? Check it out. Tires are gone. They're bald. Gonna have to replace that. Don't like the wheels. Gonna replace that. Look at this packed house. Welcome back to uh, Home Renters. We're in my garage today, and uh, what I have to do is give myself some space to work. I'm taking a break on the S14 today. Um, you saw last time I was messing around with some of the wiring stuff, and then I told you I was planning on getting some fiberglass work. Uh, I have some of the stuff in, still waiting on some of the other stuff for the fiberglass repair, but in the meantime, what I'm gonna do is work on the FJ. And I've been dying to work on the FJ. First thing I gotta do is clear myself a space to work. If you look in here, when everything is in the garage, I have no space to work. So I gotta get the bikes out, gotta get the S14 out, and then I'm gonna bring the FJ in. We're gonna do a leveling kit today. I have new wheels and tires on the way. So in preparation for that, I wanna do the leveling kit, give it a little bit more space. So I'll do the front first, flip it around, do the rear, just to give myself enough space to work. But first thing, gotta get all this out, get the S14 where the FJ is, move the FJ in here, You'll see. All right, that is much better cleaned up the space a little bit, gave myself a workable space. The S14 is parked on the side here. Getting ready to pull in the FJ, but I just wanna take a second and show you what I am ordering, and I suggest you guys do the same thing if you wanna keep the car community alive, order parts, work on your car at home. This is a time to give back if you can. So, I got some fiberglass stuff ready for the S14, bought some new saw horses and stuff like that so I could work on that. Then I went to uh, Four Wheel Parts and I ordered some, some parts from them. I got a leveling kit. I didn't go crazy with the bigger tires and the bigger wheels. So the leveling kit is just to give it a little bit more. Uh, and I, I just like the way it looks. So my new wheels are coming tomorrow and then I get to mount up those brand new Falcon Wild Peaks because my tires are dead. I've never really had good off-road tires on the FJ, so I'm pretty pumped. I'm just gonna get started and get right into it. Tight space, a little bit of a pain to try and get it on jack stands in the jack. I'm glad it actually clears the roof. <laughs> um, barely, but it does, so enough that I can work on it. However, if you look right now, those wheels are almost touching the ground, right? Barely any clearance underneath them. So when I put this on, the suspension's gonna wanna droop down a little bit more. So when I put these back on, it might be a little bit difficult. I'll have to jack up each side just a little bit further or maybe even put something on top of the jack just to get that extra little bit and try not to hit the roof when I lower this down. So I'm gonna get started and see what I can do in this tiny space. Okay, so got the wheels off in a very tight spot, but provided I think I have enough room to work on all this. Shouldn't be too much of an issue. Now, what I'm doing today is putting on a leveling kit. And for those of you who don't know what a leveling kit is, it's basically just a couple spacers that go on top of the, uh, the, sh the spring perch. So if you look right here, this is gonna come down. 
We're gonna pop this in, bolt it to that, and then these become the new bolts for the top here. So that's just a little bit of a spacer, give it a little bit more ground clearance and uh, a little bit more room for those new Falcon tires I have. So first thing we have to do is take off the sway bar. So this sway bar right here, we're gonna pop that off just to release the tension, do that on both sides. And then we're going to probably proceed into trying to drop this shock down. Now the tricky part of dropping this down is we don't wanna drop it too far to where you pull the CV boot out. So if we pull that out, we got a major problem. So what I'll do is support that with a jack and we'll do one side at a time uh, pretty easily. So I'm gonna jump right in, start uh, just taking stuff apart, see where we get. Not too bad. Well, hey there, fellow Hoonigan. How does a free car sound? You like buying Hoonigan gear? Are you thinking about buying Hoonigan gear? Well, we've got a deal for you. We're giving away Ken Block's very own 2013 Ford Focus ST Company Cruiser. Car tastefully built in 2013 to be the HHIC's daily driver turned Hoonigan Racing Division Company vehicle. Starting today, every single dollar you spend at Hoonigan.com gains you one more entry into the raffle. That means you spend 50 bucks, you get 50 times the entries. It's as simple as that. You don't gotta do anything else. Head on over to Hoonigan.com slash giveaway to see if you're eligible. Who knows what kind of VIPs have driven in this thing? Travis Pastrana, Bukin Woodbine, Andreas Backer, Trick Daddy, Obscure 80s band Oingo Boingo, and more. Excuse, it's hard to see a little bit in here, but let me walk you through what I just did. So a couple of things that had to be done were to loosen up the upper control arm. So pop that uh, ball joint out. It's just sitting on a few threads right now so it won't fall out. I loosened up this brake line to give it some uh, room to play with when it drops down. Then the tie rod is also loose in there. So this can come out, sway bar is disconnected, and then this bottom bolt is now loose. So what I'm gonna do is pop these three off on top. Oh, well actually first I'm gonna support it with a jack. Pop these three out, pop that bolt on the bottom. And hopefully that'll give me access to get this out, put that spacer on, and then all we gotta do is put it back together, repeat it on the other side. All right, after a, a little bit of prying, finally got this out. So now what I gotta do is uh, put this guy on the top. So this will just go right over here. And then we'll bolt that back in. Should be fairly difficult to put in because it was fairly difficult to take out. So adding a couple more inches is gonna make it a lot harder to put back in, but all in all, pretty straightforward. And then kind of loosen up the other side already. So should go pretty smooth and we'll be done with the front. That's that. So this should just bolt right up. And bolt it in right now. Well, I started to put this side in. So I put the shock in and uh, you can see that there, that's spaced down a bit. But before I actually put all this back together, what I wanna do is do the other side first because I don't want any of this under tension. It makes it harder to put the other side. I'm gonna have that a little bit more free. One thing you gotta remember is don't let the joint fall too far to where the, the CV joint will pop out. Also, you don't want any tension on the brake line. So make sure that those things are, are nice and then uh, work on the other side. So working on passenger side now, and then we'll put it all back together, get it back on the ground. All right, well, it is back on the ground. It was not easy, as you can see that clearance when I had this jacked all the way up. It was very difficult to get the uh, wheels back on this. So basically what I had to do was lean the wheel like this to get the bottom in and then shove it under there to get it in. It was a little bit sketchy, but got it on the fronts on. I'm gonna probably organize a way to do the rear outside a bit or, or something, because it is very tight to work in this area and uh, kind of a problem my knees are killing me so move on to the back hopefully it's not as hard as the front and then uh, I'll get the tires on this thing
All right, I can give you a quick rundown of what's going on this side. So this is the spacer for this side, and where this goes is on top of this spring here. So this perch will go up in there. There's a bolt provided put in there. So basically all I have to do is keep the rear diff supported for the time being, and then I'll remove this bottom bolt. Also this here for the the e-brake because we don't want this to swing down under a whole lot of tension while we loosen this up to get this out. So fairly straightforward, should be pretty simple. A little more simple than the front. Also, I have a lot more space now and some better lighting. So I'm just gonna go ahead and rifle through and knock this out. Okay, now that should be able to float free and uh, not get hung up when this droops down. We don't want to rip those. That is ABS. And I will support this. Pop off these bottom mounts. All right, now you see we have this out, but what we want is this to fit right up in here, and then this will go up in this zone right here. So we'll be able to bolt that up and put this right on it. You see, I've got a supply bolt right here that goes through the middle, and then that will go up through this hole right here to hold that in place. This sucks. The bolt was a lot harder to get in there than I thought. I gotta hold this top nut and then ratchet it with this one. But it's very awkward sitting under this. But... Okay, so as you can see, those cups are installed on both sides. Now all I gotta do is pop the springs back on and we'll tighten everything up and we're done. Okay, not bad. Leveling kit is done. It is on. Now, on to the next. Let's see what we got in here. Oh, see that? New Falcon Wild Peaks, ready to go. So, I'm gonna organize this, get the wheels in here as well. Go mount these up, I'm gonna see what it looks like. I'm pretty pumped now. Look at how good these Wild P tires and these KMC wheels look. Turned out great, I love it. I'm ready to go off road, hit some trails. I really love bronze and white, man. You just can't go wrong. Nice clean, the lift is perfect. All looks good. I am very, very stoked. Now I have one more one more spare wheel to throw in the back. I was a little bit leery about the, uh, the camera, but I also forgot to put another tire on, so. I need to order another tire so I can put that on, it'll look cool. But in the future, now that the lift lift is on, wheels are on, tires look good, I want to start to do the exterior a little bit. So we're gonna start doing like anything that's silver, I wanna replace with black. I think it'll look a lot nicer, clean it up. And then I do wanna make a rack. I'll probably end up ordering one just because of the time right now. 
but uh, I, I want a new roof rack, the trim to look nice, and then we'll move on from there. But for the time being, I'm gonna hop back on the S14. So thanks for watching, guys. Stay home. So the wheels and tires are mounted, but it's kind of late in the day, so it's dinner time to me. I'm just gonna cook up some ribs. Look at that. Doing a little bit of St. Louis style. I have to do a little bit more marinating before I throw these on the grill, but I should learn how to cook. We're in quarantine times. Stay home, learn how to cook.